Hello everyone. Hearty welcome to the online lecture series on readings on democracy and secularism offered by the postgraduate department of English Pioneer College. Today we are going to discuss a poem Africa by Maya Angelou. Again, this is a poet who is very familiar to you. I hope all of you remember the poem Still I Rise, which you studied in the second semester. So I'm not going to give you a detailed introduction to the poet. Instead, I'll be giving you a brief account of the life and works of the poet Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou was born as Margaret Annie Johnson in the year 1928. She is a very famous Afro-American writer and she is also famous as a civil rights activist, a singer and as a playwright. She is often regarded as one of the cultural icons of the Afro-American people. She is noted for her publication of a series of autobiographies. Among them, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is the first. Apart from this, she has written a number of poems and some of her most famous poems are obviously Africa, the present poem, then uh, another one is Woman Work, then Phenomenal Woman, On the Pulse of Morning, Still I Rise, etc. So today we are going to discuss the poem Africa. Before moving on to the poem, let me tell you that this poem is written on the continent Africa. This poem has been divided into three stanzas and each of the stanza, stanzas is giving us a picture of this Africa. The first stanza talks about pre-colonial Africa, that is how Africa used to be before colonization. The second stanza is actually a tale of African colonization. That is, it describes what happened, uh, sorry, what happened to Africa during the time of colonization. And the third stanza is presenting as an image of Africa which is slowly rising. That is, Africa is rising against all the oppressions. Now let's discuss the poem in detail. We shall begin with the first stanza. I'll read and explain. Thus she had lain, sugar cane sweet, deserts her hair, golden her feet, mountains her breast, two niles her tears. Thus she has lain, black through the ears. In the first stanza, we will get a picture of Africa where she is being compared to a beautiful woman. Here the poet is making use of a metaphor in fact, an extended metaphor because you get to see the use of this metaphor throughout the poem. Look at the beginning line of the first stanza. Thus, she had lain. As if the poet is telling a story. And what is that story? It is the story of Africa. So, the poet is revealing us the story of Africa. Thus, she had lain. And here, as I told you before, Africa is being compared to a beautiful woman. So, all the beautiful geographical features of Africa have been compared to the physical features of a beautiful woman. That is what we get to see in the next few lines. Thus, she had lain sugar cane sweet. Africa has been described as a beautiful woman who is sweet as sugar cane. Here, we are reminded of the sugarcane plantations in Africa. So this woman is as sweet as sugarcane. That is Africa as a beautiful woman is sweet as sugarcane. And deserts her hair. The vast deserts of Africa are being compared to the hair of a beautiful woman. That is uh, the long silky hair of this woman is reminding us of the worst deserts of Africa. Golden her feet. What does it mean? Here we are reminded of the ripe, bright yellow colored fields. The fields which are ready for harvesting. So golden her feet. Her feet have been compared to the golden color of this fields. Mountains her breasts, her 
sorry the mountains of africa which have been compared to the breasts of this beautiful woman to niles her tears what does it indicate we know that nile is one of the longest rivers which is running through africa and the nile is getting split into two and uh, two branches and it is flowing and the tears of this woman sorry the nile river is being compared to the tears of this woman the two branches of the nile river is being compared to the tears of this woman and this she has lain this was how africa used to be in the past she was she was lying down in a calm and reposing way in a relaxed way and she remained black through the years and here it indicates the native people earlier this land was filled with this native people whose color was black and that was the natural color of this land since it is natural it is beautiful too and here in this stanza we get a picture of africa in fact it refers to the pre colonial africa and we see here a land which is filled with so much of riches which is uh, a prosperous land and uh, we get to see the geographical features the beautiful geographical features as well that is all adding to the beauty and charm of this land and here what we understand is that before colonization africa was once such a land it was a land of peace it was a land of prosperity it was a land of abundance that is what the first stanza is talking about now let's move on to the second stanza as i told you before the second stanza is about the coming of the invaders and what they did to this land let's see it over the white seas rhyme white and called brigands ungentled icicle bald took her daughters sold her strong sons churched her with jesus bled her with guns thus she has lain this stanza is talking about what this colonization did to this land here the coming of the invaders are men is mentioned how did they come to this land they came to this land over the white seas it seems like they are coming from a distant land they are coming from a far off land or they are coming from a foreign land and how did they come it seems like they are arriving by ships they are sailing over the white seas and that is how they are coming to this land and why they are coming to this land obviously they have some hidden intentions and that is revealed to us in the coming lines before that how these people are described how these foreigners are described they are described as rhyme white and called what is the meaning of the word rhyme rhyme is actually the froth sorry the frost which is formed on the surface of called objects and its color is white and here it is in connection with the color of the colonizers they are white and they are called what does it indicate it indicates their attitude and they are also described as brigands brigands means bandits or the robbers why did they come to this land they have come to this land to loot this land to destroy this land to take off its natural resources and to exploit the people and that is why they have been referred to here as brigands brigands are the robbers who are looting the people and here they have come to this land to loot this people and also to loot this land and because of their very attitude they are described as ungentled it means they are rude these people are rude and they are cruel and they are also described as icicle bald if you see the meaning of the word icicle uh, we get to know that it refers to the long pointed pieces of ice that, uh, that is that is formed due to the freezing of this dripping water 
and here it indicates the very attitude of this white people or this colonizers or this brigands. This icicle bolt is referring to their very attitude. They are cold and they are indifferent and they are cruel also. They are quite indifferent to the natives of this land. That is why they are, uh, they are not even minding their pain, their sufferings, etc. And rather they are driven by their own personal motives. And what did they do to this land and the people? They took her daughters, sold her strong sons, churched her with Jesus, bled her with guns. And these are all referring to the atrocities of this colonizers or the invaders. They took her daughters, that is the women. The women were brutally raped by this colonizers. They were being subjected to the physical tortures. And they sold her strong sons, the able-bodied men or the young men. They were all taken from their families or their homes. And these Africans were sold into the uh, sold, sorry, um, sold in the slave markets, which means they have been taken uh, from their land as slaves, and they have been taken to the different parts of the world, and uh, they were supposed to serve the white people, and they were also uh, taken for working as slaves in the plantations and all. And here we get an image of or here we are reminded of the very idea of the slave trade and human trafficking. And once this younger generation is destroyed, the colonizers are destroying the very future of Africa itself. Now, look at the next line. Churched her with Jesus, bled her with guns. This is referring to the forced conversions to Christianity. That is, the colonizers are imposing their religion upon the native people. And if they are, they are not ready for this, um, for accepting this religion, this colonizers' religion, they'll be subjected to physical torture. That is what is referred to here in this line, bled her with guns. They are being subjected to this physical torture and forcibly they have been converted to uh, Christianity and thus she has lain. And here uh, we get the contradiction, contradic contradictory idea. Earlier uh, when she was mentioning that, that she had lain, the, we are reminded of a beautiful woman who was lying down in a reposing manner or in a calm manner or lying down passively. But here, when she has, I mean, when she is uh, using the line, thus she has lain, she is referring to the sufferings of Africa or the atrocities which are infl inflicted upon Africa. And now we can find that the peace is gone, the peace of this land is gone. And it is, it has become a completely devastated land. And this is what colonization or the colonizers did to Africa and its people. And now we shall move on to the third stanza. Now she is rising. Remember her pain. Remember the losses. Her screams loud and vain. Remember her riches. Her history slain. Now she is striding, although she had lain. Here the poet is becoming optimistic. Obviously she has huge hopes for the future of Africa. Now she says that instead of all this oppression and hardships, now Africa is trying to emerge. Now Africa is rising up. Now she is rising, but we should not forget the past of Africa or the colonial past of Africa. What all she suffered. Remember her pain. She suffered or she was having endless pain during that time. And remember the losses. Obviously, she had to bear so many losses. Her screams loud and vain. When all this was happening to this land, she was crying out loud. But there was nobody to help her. And she was crying helplessly. 
remember her riches remember how this land was used to be earlier it had prosperity it had peace it had abundance but once this colonization happened everything was gone but now she is trying to recover from all these losses her history slain this is what the colonizers did to africa in fact uh, we get a picture of this africa as dark continent and this was a distorted picture of africa which which was uh, presented to us by the colonizers and nobody knew about how this land was in the beginning we only know this land as a dark continent this is because the colonizers gave such a picture to us that is a distorted image of africa and the colonizers colonizers didn't allow africa to have a history also her history was slain but now it is gradually waking up now she is striding although she had lain which indicates that now africa is trying to stand up against all this oppression stride indicates a walk with long decisive steps now africa is confident and it is moving forward now she is not lying down now she is not weak instead now she is rising up she is emerging she is emerging as a new power and here the poem ends with a positive note and as i told you before in these three stanzas we see the different periods in african history how africa in the beginning how was africa in the beginning and what this colonization did to africa and what is the present state of africa here we are reminded of uh, another poem uh, by the senegalese poet david diop which has also the same title africa in that poem david diop is also presenting as a picture of africa where he talks about or where he describes africa as a land of proud warriors which means it had a glorious past and he is also talking about the pain that african people endured and he asks in that poem is this the back that is unbent is this the is this the back that never breaks under the weight of humiliation which is Uh, describing uh, uh, the endurance, the power of endurance of this land and the people, and in that poem also, the poet is talking about the rising up of Africa. He says that now Africa is slowly springing up sl slowly. That is, it is rising. So these two poems talk about the past of Africa. and what this colonization did to africa and what is the present state of africa i hope you got the poem now thank you now let's move on to the question and answer session question number 1 what is the metaphor with which the poem begins answer the poem begins with the metaphor of a huge phenomenal woman of physical appeal question number 2 What is problematic about the metaphor of Africa as a woman? Answer: The poet compares Africa to a woman. This woman can be the mother of or a life giver to all Africans who nourished and protected them. The poet also portrays Africa as a woman who is physically and emotionally exploited, which problematizes the condition of a devastated land. Question number three. Does this metaphor suggest a phenomenal woman? How? Read the poem Phenomenal Woman. Answer: The metaphor suggests a phenomenal woman. In the poem Phenomenal Woman, Maya Angelou presents a confident black woman who rises above racial oppression. In the poem Africa, the poet presents the emergence of Africa against the colonial oppression. Question number 4. Compare Angelou's Black Africa with the colonial label Dark Continent. Answer: Angelou says that 
Africa remained black through the years, which means the original inhabitants of this land were blacks. Angelo equates black with beauty and naturalness. On the other hand, the colonizers' description of Africa as a dark continent shows their contempt and racial prejudice. Question number 5. Why does Maya Angelou use the phrase brigands ungendled? Answer Maya Angelou uses the phrase brigands ungendled to refer to the indifferent and unkind attitude of the colonizers who came to loot Africa. Question number 6. What particular aspect is conveyed through the phrase icicle bald? Answer Icicles are the sharp sticks of ice. This reminds us of the cold sea the intruders sailed on to reach Africa. The phrase icicle bold refers to the cold and indifferent attitude of the intruders. Question number 7. Comment on the phrase churched with Jesus. Answer. This refers to the forced conversion of the natives to Christianity. The religious freedom of the natives is curtailed with the imposition of the colonizers' religion. Question number 8. What are the two kinds of violence indicated through churched and bled? Answer. The use of the word churched indicates the religious or cultural violence which uproots the native tradition. The word blood indicates the physical or material violence inflicted upon the Africans to subjugate them. Question number 9. What happens to a country when sons and daughters are lost? Answer. The future of a country is destroyed when its sons and daughters are lost. Thank you.